Hi guys, um, welcome back. Today we're doing a lovely botanical study of the cosmos. A really beautiful flower and this will be a great time to look at painting white flowers on white paper. A challenge that a lot of you ask me about. So let's get your kit and get started. Here is our beautiful cosmos. It is just the most amazing, delicate flower. Um, and there's so much going on, but we're just gonna sort of pare it back and choose a few choice bits. So I'll just pop it back up there. And what I might do is, is be an awful person and pick off the bits that I need to, need to use. But for the start, we're going to give ourselves a bit of a stem. It's got a wonderful wiggle and wobble, this flower. And we'll do two buds there and our main flower there. Okay, so it was a central stem, two off the side, so we can say, well, we could say goodbye to the pencil momentarily, but I will just put a, a central circle so we know where the flower is gonna be. And then I will also put a curve there, and this one is gonna remain as a bud. So here we go. And I'm very sorry, Cosmos, but you're coming with me. <laughs> And this amazing petal flower has got these very long sort of wild petals, um, which are white in this instance, which is a great opportunity for us to have a go at our painting white on white again. We've done it once or twice before, once with um, daisies and once with sort of summer wildflowers. The most important thing with a white petaled flower is to just look a bit more closely and find the colour that's lurking there. It'll be very, very subtle, but it is there. And putting that to one side now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my largest brush and I'm going to paint some long petals, but I'm actually going to paint them with these sort of unpainted ridges down them and then at the top I'm just going to close it off. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight petals, which is quite a rare thing to have an even number of petals on a flower, but that means therefore I'm going to paint four to start off with. So I'm giving myself those little unpainted stripes. And I'm coming in each time, anchoring the petals into that central circle. You can either start from the top and work your way in, or if you like to work from the center and come out. And I purposefully did those so they all they weren't like a perfect four even petals because these petals are so wayward and wobbly and lovely. They just don't need it. Now I'm gonna pull off another flower from my stem. This one we're going to do down here, so it's a lot more closed. But it's still got a similar feel, so we're going to use this cup shape and I'm going to paint in one, two, three, and a fourth one. It's just going to sort of peel out, but we're only going to see a bit of it, so we're not going to see much. So there we have our petals done, and now we can have a look at the greenery. I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush, but not a huge amount smaller. We're going for size two, and I need a green that has a lovely yellow vibrance to it. So I'll take my sap green and a bit of cadmium yellow and mix that together and we've got a beautiful stem colour. I'm going to start at the bottom. Well I'm going to start on the bottom section. I actually quite like working sort of top down. Quite a thick stem and then my stems that come away from it are going to be a bit thinner. So that's just all done by controlling the point of the brush and how much pressure 
you're putting on it. At the base of each joint, we get these amazing tendrils. Whoops. So I'm going to pop a few of those in right now. And again, I'm going to at least begin to paint these with my larger brush. Because you can get these lovely fine lines with as long as you've got a nice fine point on your larger brush. nice. Let's look at this one here. So the cup of the flower, we see firstly there's some sort of slightly yellowy sepals and then we've got the green here. Now because we haven't finished off our petals yet, we can't do anything quite yet, but what we can do is we can put in our bud. So again, very sorry Mr Cosmos, for the sake of art, you're being pulled apart. I'm just gonna focus on doing that nice top one there. So I am gonna use this line to show me sort of the central point of my bud, and I'm going to do C curves that just don't quite touch each other too much. So we get a lovely sense of a bud with all the different sepals closing in and then with a bit of sap green I'm just going to run that up and it will just capture elements of the bud itself. Now we need to do our central stem so up that comes but I need to remember that I'm going to have another petal here so I'm just going to do the stem to about there. Lovely. Okay, so let's just let all this dry and we can come back and do the next layer of petals. So now our petals have dried, we can get back to placing in the second layer. It's one of my favorite things. The second layer of petals is always a bit sort of think oh god have I ruined it and then it just dries so beautifully and looks just like the first layer. There was one petal on this one which just doesn't seem to have come out much so I am just going to add it in from the first layer. Okay here we go. If you're a regular watcher, you'll know uh, on my Instagram and in general, you know that the anemone is a big, uh, big flower. In it's a fun one for me. I really enjoy doing it. And of course, this is extremely similar when it comes to the techniques. So it's always nice to realise that you pretty much knew what you were doing in the first place anyway, because <laughs> you've done it before. Okay, so we've got eight there. Whilst those dry, we can go back to our little bud. A little bud. Right, I've got some proper sap green. Might just mix it down a little bit. We probably don't need it to be pure sap green. And we're going to do the sepals. So I'm going to start with my smaller brush, a two point, uh, two tenths here, and. I'm going to paint them so that they sort of come up round the side. Just as long as they emanate from the centre, then you're good. So you won't see much from the outside. 
and then there's a little bit of the stock sap green from the middle and also down the stem. I'm going to blend it down a little bit. Nice. Now I can do a few little extra of these fronds that would be sort of poking about underneath the stem. And I am going to do these with the smaller brush just because they are just a little bit smaller in general. And I always find it easier to start from the stem and then frill your way out. Great, that's looking nice. Okay, we just need to wait for these petals to dry and then we can continue. Okay, so just move these to one side, give ourselves a bit more room and we can get on with our rest of the flowers and you can see how the petals have formed beautiful crisp edges which allows them to really show up whilst still being white flowers on a white page. So uh, the next thing to do is to create the sort of green, well they're like sepal petals I suppose because there's still a layer of sepals to go but we can place in some nice little petal shapes just underneath. Lovely. And whilst we wait for those to dry, we can do the centre of the flower. Now, the centre of this flower is an amazing golden pollen and it is a, a real sort of dome shape. So we're going to start off, it's going to be a build up of layers this I always find, we're going to start off with a sort of lightish yellowy green and I'm just going to do a sort of dots around the middle. So that central circle is really handy. It's really important that you do actually draw that. And now I'm just going to start dabbing in. Slowly drawing in the colour. And that's the first stage for that. We can head back to this one. And we're going to get some proper sap green here. And now I can start to look at the actual sepals that are a bit more long and slender than the uh, little ones underneath them and also they're a real dark green. So first off with that little bit of colour I've drawn in, I'm just going to draw that down the stem. using a bit of water to blend that. And now, let's work our way upwards. They seem to come in between So back up here, I'm now going to go in with some really um, quite concentrated cadmium yellow. Now cadmium yellow as opposed to any other named yellow 
in the watercolour family is just that little bit more opaque because it has cadmium in it. So it's a really good one if you need a strong yellow. So I'm now going to add an extra halo of dots around the edge. And this is in that yellow. And now I'm going to start doing a few little sort of dashes with a quite a blobby brush. I, I sort of want this all to kind of blend into each other and then just fill in the center with a few more dashes. Okay, we need to let that dry now. And so whilst we wait, we can do a little bit more on the stems and then we can finish off. So a little bit more sap green, just running down that stem. And we can pop some in to the main stem at the bottom. And then also just a little bit this can be a bit of a challenging thing to not end up thickening your um, little fronds. So just be careful, but it's nice to add a little bit to the underside of some of these. Right then, so we're just going to let this dry and then we're going to come back for the last bit of detail. Finishing off, we're going to be doing a little bit of darkness and a little bit of highlight on that centre. So first off, I've just got a little bit of shadow, but a greeny shadow to just pick out some of the undersides. Go. And then I'm going to take some lemon yellow, some really nice, light, vibrant yellow, but I do need it fairly opaque, so I'm just waking it up and getting a nice, decent amount on my brush. And just dropping that in on the top side there. So it kind of makes sense that the upper side has got a little bit of lightness, the dark side is the bit underneath. And then I'm going to take my larger brush and just pop a little bit of this slightly shadowier green and it's going to just sort of take a tiny bit of colour from that central area there, but it's also Going to just spread out on its own. This always feels like a bit of a risk at the last moment. But trust me, it also, everything dries a lot lighter. And in doing this, the good thing is, is we're just picking up the colour that's on the outside there. So we get more of a sort of lighter colour on the top and less colour from the bottom. And there you have it. A lovely cosmos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that lovely flower painting and I really hope you give it a go. And I want to say a big thank you to our patrons for supporting this channel. Your support allows me to be able to create more and more lovely videos that everyone can enjoy. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button 
and comment below to let me know what you'd like me to paint next. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss another video. Okay, bye.